Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Laura and today's video we're going to talk about my March TBR. I have quite the hefty ambitious um, TBR for March. I have several projects that I'm working on, readathons that I want to participate in. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get into it. One thing that I have going on in March is my book madness. I'm super excited about this. If you missed the announcement video for that, I'll leave it in the description box down below. That is starting on March 1st and every day essentially you'll get a chance to vote on a poll on my community tab where we're pairing two books against each other. It's like a bracket style like March Madness inspired competition if you will. Essentially there'll be a different poll to vote between two books for every day for the first half of March and it will lead up to two final books being in the final round of that competition and those two final books will be two books that I will read in the month of March. Of course I don't know which two books are going to end up in that final round but I will pop a picture on the screen for you of all the 16 different options that are going to be part of the initial voting round. So any of these 16 books could be the final two books that I will read for Book Madness. Super excited about that one. I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for all the positive feedback I've gotten for that so far and I can't wait for that to kick off tomorrow if you're watching this the day that I post this video. The next project that I have like created for myself is a cozy fantasy reading vlog. So cozy fantasy is a genre that I haven't gotten into yet but I also have like a lot of books that I've marked on my TBR as like wanting to read. At the same time that that cozy reading vlog will be going on, uh, Gwen from Gwendolyn Kissinger here on YouTube, along with two co-hosts, Keisha from A Book Like You and Hope from Hope on the Coast, are going to be hosting a 24-hour readathon called Let's Get Graphic. So this is a readathon where we're specifically reading comics, graphic novels, and manga for 24 hours. It sounds so much fun. They do have some prompts um, for that, and I have decided to read the Tea Dragon Society trilogy, I guess, series. I don't know if any more are coming out in this series or not, or if this is just like the full complete series, but this is, I believe everything is out so far. We have the Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. So this is the first one in that series. The graphics just look so beautiful for this. Super excited about that one. And then the Tea Dragon Festival, I believe is the next one in the series. Again, just with beautiful graphics. And then the final one is the Tea Dragon Tapestry. So these are all written and I believe also illustrated by Katie O'Neill. And yeah, I'm just very excited to read these. I don't know a whole lot about these um, other than I know the first one is at least following Greta. She's like a blacksmith apprentice. This is classified as a middle grade, but it's a type of middle grade that anybody could enjoy, um, including adults. So I'm very excited to read that. I know that there's some queer representation in here and just a fun little cozy graphic reading um, experience. So three in that series. And then also for that cozy fantasy reading vlog, I have chosen a couple of books that were my favorite movies as a child. And that's kind of like the inspiration for this whole theme of cozy fantasy is that I really loved The Last Unicorn as a movie, but I've never read the book. This is by Peter S. Beagle. And I just remember like, it's like a core memory that was unlocked recently where I was just thinking about this movie and how much I enjoyed it as a kid. The Last Unicorn is about a unicorn. <laughs> Imagine that. Basically she comes to find out or maybe she's having like weird dreams about this. She may be the last unicorn on earth. And she goes on this journey to try to figure that out. Is she the last one? Or if there are still other unicorns, what happens to them? There is like a side romance plot. There's a lot of like kind of misfit characters that she befriends on this journey. I really want to check out the movie for the library as well because I saw that our library does have that on DVD and subject my kids and my family to watching that movie with me after I read the book for it. Another movie that I loved to rent from the library and watch over and over again as a kid was The Phantom Toll Booth. This dog on the clock, like when I saw this, like that again unlocked another like core memory for me. <laughs> um, this is Talk. This is Milo, the main character. And so Milo is also on like an adventure 
um, type of journey, but he goes through this phantom toll booth that appears and transports him into this really bizarre land. In that strange land, Milo meets some of the most logically illogical characters ever met on this side or that side of reality, including King Azaz, the unabridged, unhappy ruler of Dictionopolis. So there's lots of plays on words when you come to meet that character. The math magician, faintly macabre, the not so wicked witch, spelled W-H-I-C-H. Like just a lot of puns and play on words. It's just a really fun time. If I didn't say this is the Phantom Toll Booth by Norton Jester. Sorry, I'm a little all over the place, but I'm just so excited for it. And last for the cozy fantasy I hope to get to is Legends and Lattes. I have heard this book talked about so many times, and this is by Travis Baldry. The only plot that I know of for this is that there is an orc who decides to open a coffee shop, and coffee in this land is kind of like a new thing. Like nobody's ever heard of coffee or coffee shops from what I understand. And that's basically all I've ever heard described about this plot. I think that's pretty much all there is to it for the most part. It's a very like character driven story, like slice of life just following this orc. I'm super excited to see what I think about that one. I've heard a lot of really good praise and I'm sure you have too. Hopefully I can finish all of those by March 11th because starting on March 11th and I think going through like the 24th is Galaxy -a -thon. This is hosted by by Macy at the Bright Side Girl. I participated in her randomathon, like a circus theme park themed readathon last month, and it was so much fun. And so I'm very excited for Galaxyathon. It's all space themed types of books, or however you want to make the reading prompts fit. So she has some specific reading prompts for her readathon. One of those being the word star in the title. So I chose Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli. I honestly know nothing about this. I don't think I've even read the synopsis. I just looked up books that have the word star. This had pretty good ratings and reviews. This is a YA fiction. It says, from the day she arrives at quiet Micah High, the burst of color and sound, the always hum of the murmur of Star Girl, Star Girl. She captures Leo Borlock's heart with just one smile. Her sparks are a school spirit revolution with just one cheer. The students of Micah High are enchanted at first. And then they turn on her. Stargirl is suddenly shunned for everything she that makes her different. And Leo, panicked and desperate with love, urges her to become the very thing that can destroy her normal. It's a celebration of nonconformity. It says the author Jerry Spinelli weaves an emotional tale about the perils of popularity and the thrill and inspiration of first love. It sounds really good. Sounds like really like topics that I love reading about, the type of story that I love to read about. And so I hope I really enjoy that one. Another reading prompt is Planets on the Cover. And this is also on my 100 top 100 books scratch off poster that I've been trying to check off. This is A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I know that there are other books in this series, but I believe this is the first one. Now I have read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It has been a very, very long time ago though, so I don't remember much about this. I just know it's a very like quirky, funny at times kind of story about a man who I think he's on planet Earth. Maybe his home is about to get bulldozed or they're going to blow up planet Earth or something and he gets like picked up by this spaceship and is traveling and meets all kinds of like crazy creatures in space. Lots of fun things happening in this book. I just remember vibes that it was a really good time and so I'm excited to read it over again. Don't mind the dogs barking in the backyard if you can hear them. Another reading prompt is set in the future and so for that I've chosen Illumine. I think that's how you say that. Um, this is the first book in this series as well. This is written by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. And this is like a story that I think is exclusively told or mostly told. Honestly, it looks like exclusively told through mixed media, but I heard that this is a fantastic, really engaging and interesting type of read. I don't know a whole lot about this one, so let me read some of the description to you. It says, this morning, Katie thought breaking up with Ezra was the hardest thing that she'd have to do today, but this afternoon, her planet was invaded. The year is 2575, so set 
quite a bit in the future. And two rival mega corporations are at war over a planet that's a little more than an ice covered speck at the edge of the universe. Too bad nobody thought to warn the people living on it. With enemy fire raining down on them, exes, Katie and Ezra, are barely even talking to each other, um, but are forced to fight their way onto the evacuating fleet with an enemy warship in hot pursuit. There's so much more to this, but that's kind of like the gist, the setup of the story. And again, it's told through nothing but mixed media pieces. And I've never read a book quite like that before. So I'm very excited to read that one as well. There are two more books that I have um, either just on ebook or I have on reserve and waiting to get here from the library. So they're not here just yet. But one of the prompts was for space royalty. And I chose for that one Ice Planet Barbarians. Um, that is by Ruby Dixon. And I have heard that this is kind of like a ridiculous wild ride. I think this is like a space themed romance, like a romantic, I guess you would say, but I think that it's pretty smutty if I understand and remember that right. It is a series, so I think if I do enjoy the first one, there's a lot more in the series that I could read for that one. It's space royalty because it's about a woman who has like a romantic relationship with the like tribal leader on another planet. So I don't know much more <laughs> about it again than that. And then another one that I'm super excited to get to is Bad Astronauts by Grady Hendrix. You guys know that I have a like slight obsession for Grady Hendrix and his writing. Bad Astronauts is a space novella, so that's what the prompt is, but I don't know if they ever actually make it to space. Um, so I've heard this described as like a redneck NASA. Actually, I really loved what Grady Hendrix said about this on his website, so let me pull it up. Okay, so on Grady Hendrix's own website, which sometimes like to really get into an author's head, sometimes you need to go to their website and see what they have to say about their own book. Books. I really like doing that or reading author's notes and stuff like that before you dive into a book. Anywho, this is set in um, Melville, South Carolina and at a time that the economy was kind of down and NASA's budget was cut to the bone so space programs were being you know abandoned. There were two astronauts in this little town in South Carolina and one is now stuck in an abandoned International Space Station after his mission was bad. So kind of like the Martian vibes, right? Um, but there's nobody that's able to bring him home because of the budget cuts and everybody is only too happy to ignore this embarrassing sign of American failure and just let him die. But his cousin Walter Ruddy isn't going to let that happen. Tanked on vodka, living on a farm whose only crop seems to be the cars on cinder blocks. He's a washout from the space shuttle. Why is my like voice changing? program and he'll be damned if he was going to let his cousin die in the sky like a dog. <laughs> so he begins to build a rocket like basically in his backyard. If America won't rescue its astronauts, he'll do it himself. This is my favorite part. Violating numerous laws, good taste, common sense, logic and reason, Walter Reddy becomes a lightning rod for people who aren't ready to lay down and die just yet. His farm is transformed into the promised land for misfits, drifters, rocket junkies, pyromaniacs, dreamers, science nerds, and astro hippies who still believe that the future of America is in space, but it won't be easy. Chances are good that they'll blow themselves up, get arrested, or kill each other long before they ever get into orbit. Think of it as gravity, but with more beer. I just love that. I think that sounds so entertaining. Um, Side me up. There are only five reading prompts for Galaxy a Thon, but another book that I would really love to get to if I have the time, it is a two week long read a thon, so maybe there will be time, um, is The Humans by Matt Haig or Haig. I'm not sure how you say that author's last name, but this is author of The Midnight Library, which I have not read, but I know is pretty popular. I think a lot of people liked it, but some people didn't. Um, and I think this book people kind of feel the same about. I've seen like kind of mixed reviews on this, um, but this is basically about an alien who comes to Earth and he's just observing humans from my understanding of it. I think less of like a space adventure as just like a conversation on humans and what makes us unique. 
you know, as a species. And just seeing that through the eyes of an outside perspective of this alien. So I think that's the type of like literary fiction slash sci-fi mashup that I would potentially really enjoy. So I definitely want to read this. I hope that I get a chance to um, for this month in this galaxy a thon but if not, it's just going to stay on my TBR until I do get a opportunity to pick that up. At the tail end of Galaxy-a-thon, another YouTube friend of mine, Summer, from Seasons Readings, is hosting a readathon called Bows and Books. This readathon goes from March 21st through the 24th, so the last few days of Galaxy-a-thon kind of overlap with this one. Oh, I forgot to grab the book for it. I really want to read Magnolia Parks for this readathon. This is by Jessica Hastings. The new one I think just came out in a series, but I have not read any of them yet. This is like a toxic love story. I don't know how I'll feel about this. Kind of similar to like Ice Planet Barbarians. I'm just really intrigued. I'm just curious to see if this is the type of like dramatic, toxic book that sometimes is like a guilty pleasure for me. I think of like some of the reality TV shows that I like that kind of makes me think I might want to read a book like this. There are several different reading prompts for bows and books, but because it's overlapping with galaxy a -thon already, I'm just kind of stacking all of the prompts for bows and books. Prompts are to read a book with a bow or ribbon on the cover, and you can see that on the deer's hoof right here is a teeny tiny little bow and so there's also like a little ribbon down here so i'm definitely counting it for that prompt this is also a book by a female author which is another prompt and then she has like a pick a bow um reading prompt on her instagram post for this and if you pick the blue bow that is romance so that is another reading prompt and blue is like my favorite color. So I'm basically stacking all three of those prompts into one book um, because the rest of my TBR is so ambitious. I also have one more book for the Sleep When I'm Dead book club that I would really like to get to. Again, that's on reserve at the library, but it's a new release. So there are, I am like waiting. I'm on like a holds list. I think I'm like number 10 in the queue. So it should get here in time. That is Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham. So this is a thriller. That's what, you know, I think most of the books, if not all the book club picks for Sleep When I'm Dead book club are. Again, I haven't heard like the best reviews about this book so far. Jessie is the host for Sleep When I'm Dead book club. So I will quote her and say, form your own opinions. <laughs> So I will definitely be reading that. I don't know much about it, honestly. I'm only reading it just because I really have a good time participating in the book discussions and the Discord, and she does like a live book discussion at the end of the month um, for the book club picks. And no matter what, it's a good time just with the group of people that she always has. That is everything that I ambitiously hope to get to in the month of March. Comment down below if any of these books that I mentioned that I will be reading next month are your favorite so that I can make sure that if I'm falling behind in time, maybe I prioritize some of the ones that you guys enjoy and be sure to vote in the book madness poll. I can't wait to see which two books I will read after all of these readathons are done. Um, that's what I will be doing at the very end of March is reading those final two books so that I can tell you what I thought about them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and stick around for more from me. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye.